Tonight, several developing stories as we come on. The severe storm threat, flash flood watches up and down the East Coast, fears a dam could give way, residents told to evacuate. Plus, the tornado confirmed here in New York City. 50 million Americans now in the storm zone heading into the weekend. Also breaking tonight, planting evidence, the video obtained by ABC News, an officer in plain clothes and off duty shooting a man in the face, then appearing to place something on the ground. Was he caught on camera trying to cover up a crime? The bombshell interview tonight in the Ohio State coach scandal. The assistant coach accused of domestic abuse now saying head coach Urban Meyer knew about the allegations. Just moments ago, Meyer responding. Also tonight, police cornering the suspect wanted for murdering a prominent doctor. What he did when officers moved in and the chilling discovery made by detectives. Plus, the wild encounter. A man caught on camera in Yellowstone taunting a bison. The massive animal at one point lunging at him. Why that tourist is now facing charges. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. And good evening, and it's great to have you with us on a busy Friday night. I'm Tom Yamas, in for David. And we begin tonight with dangerous storm threats as we come on the air. Flash flooding alerts for 50 million people from Georgia all the way to Maine. In Lynchburg, Virginia, take a look at this emergency crews keeping a close eye on the College Lake Dam, now crippled and under repair. 150 homes evacuated over fears it could fail. And this destruction from a rare confirmed EF0 tornado hitting New York City, winds up to 85 miles per hour, downing at least 50 trees. Powerful storms also forcing ground stops at major airports in the Northeast. ABC's Eva Pilgrim leads us off. Tonight, fears in Virginia that a dam could breach. Officials in Lynchburg issued a warning that the College Lake Dam was at risk of imminent failure. The failure could send up to 17 feet of water into parts of the city of 80,000 people. Some 150 homes evacuated. With pending weather coming in again this evening, we are still concerned about its overall stability. Tonight, crews gaining an upper hand in the race to stabilize it. Heavy downpours now hammering more than 50 million across the east. Up to half a foot of rain causing major flash flooding in central Virginia. Residents rescued from their stranded vehicles, high water boats bringing families to safety. In my latest count, they've gotten about uh, 10 people out. To the north, a rare tornado touching down in New York City. Winds up to 85 miles per hour tearing through this Queens neighborhood. Heard the rain, then everything went flying all over the place, then all the electric went out. Toppling trees and power lines, ripping siding off of homes. Storms now causing thousands of delays and hundreds of cancellations at airports across the Northeast. And Eva joins us now live from LaGuardia Airport. And Eva, passengers all along the East Coast could be in for a long night. That's right, Tom. There have been ground stops in Boston, Newark, and here at LaGuardia. At least seven airports looking at major cancellations. And it's not going to get better anytime soon. Rain is in the forecast for tomorrow morning. Tom. All right, Eva Pilgrim leading us off tonight. Eva, thank you. Let's get right to ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano along New York's West Side Highway with an update now on those flash flood watches. Rob, good evening. Hey, good evening, Tom. Well, they've been expanded, basically, and Eva's right. We've got more rain in the forecast and over some saturated uh, soil. We've had some severe weather, including tornado warnings as far north as New Hampshire, where rainfall rates today over three inches per hour. So those watches remain up with that continued flow. Most of the action has been west of I-95, but that's going to change over the next 24 hours. And we're looking for another three to four plus inches of rainfall. So that's going to spur some flooding. Let's time it out. A couple more rounds coming through. We had two last night and this afternoon, and then more uh, tonight, and then another one tomorrow morning through New York. And then getting into Boston in the afternoon. Some drier air behind that, but the next 20 or hour, hours or so, Tom, could get a little bit rough. Tom? Rob Marciano for us tonight. Rob, thank you. We turn now to a developing story here in New York. ABC News obtaining video of an off-duty police officer allegedly shooting a man in the face, then trying to plant something on him before authorities arrive. The confrontation caught on surveillance, the officer wounding the victim, and what happens when he appears to notice the camera. ABC's Ariel Reshef with that video. Tonight, this disturbing new video obtained by ABC News from the New York City Police Department, capturing the moment an off-duty officer shoots a man in the face, then allegedly tries to cover it up. That's Sergeant Richard Blake wearing the backpack, 
You can see the two men appearing to argue in the street before Blake opens fire. The officer hovering over 21-year-old Tavon Santana. It looks like he places an object by his side. But when he appears to notice the camera, he bends down to remove it. Investigators say the cop initially claimed Santana tried to rob him. We think uh, there may have been some sort of dispute prior to this incident. But police sources say the two knew each other and may have been fighting over a girlfriend. Authorities are not revealing if Santana was armed, but did say this. Just to clarify, there was no firearm found at the scene? No firearm recovered. The NYPD now looking into the actions of the 40-year-old officer. There are certain things that we saw in this investigation that we have questions that are unanswered at this point. Tonight, Santana's mother calling for justice. I want justice for my son and my family. Ariel Reshef joins us now live tonight. Ariel, that video apparently somewhat damaging to that off-duty police officer. Has the NYPD taken action with that sergeant? And how is the victim doing tonight? Well, Tom, Tavon Santana is in the hospital in stable condition. As for Sergeant Blake, he was placed on modified duty within hours of that incident as both his department and the Brooklyn DA investigate. Tom. Ariel, thank you. Now to the growing scandal rocking college football and Ohio State University. A fired assistant coach accused of domestic abuse breaking his silence tonight. At the same time, his former boss, head coach Urban Meyer, also speaking out after he was placed on leave. The school investigating whether Meyer knew about the allegations and stayed quiet. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth. Listen, we, we had a toxic relationship. Tonight, fired Ohio State assistant football coach Zach Smith breaking his silence after being accused of domestic abuse by his ex-wife, Courtney. There was aggression in, in the relationship, but anything I ever did to her was a defensive action. All I know is I've never hit my wife. I've never hit her. I've never beat her. Nothing. I was scared. But Courtney telling Stadium Sports Network he was abusing her as early as 2009. He picked me up by my neck and threw me down on the ground in our bathroom and screamed at me, look what you turned me into. In an exclusive interview with ESPN, Smith also delivering this bombshell that head coach Urban Meyer knew about the allegations in 2015. He said, what the hell's going on? What is this? What is this? And I told him, I, I laid it all out for him. I said, apparently my ex-wife is trying to get me charged with uh, domestic abuse. How did he respond to that? He, he looked at me and said, if, I swear to God, Zach, if, if I find out you hit her, you're done. You're fired. Meyer had previously denied any knowledge of the allegation. I was never told about anything. It was never anything came to light. I never had a conversation about it. So I know nothing about that. Tonight, Coach Meyer just releasing a statement saying he failed when he made those very remarks, writing, quote, my intention was not to say anything inaccurate or misleading. However, I was not adequately prepared to discuss these sensitive personnel issues with the media, and I apologize. All right, Kana joins us now, and Kana with Meyer now admitting he knew about the allegations. The big question tonight, is he in danger of losing his job? Well, Tom, Meyer recently signed a new contract that reportedly has a clause obligating him to report any potential misconduct by members of his staff. Meyer is now currently on paid administrative leave during this investigation. Tom. Kana Whitworth for us tonight. Kana, thank you. We turn out of the new developments in the urgent manhunt for a dangerous murder suspect in Houston. The alleged killer wanted for shooting a well-known doctor over a 20-year grudge confronted by police this morning, taking his own life. Authorities say he was wearing a bulletproof vest. A list of a dozen names, including the doctors, were found at his home. So who else was on the list? ABC's Marcus Moore is in Houston. The hunt for the man who gunned down a prominent Houston doctor riding his bike to work, ending, police say, in this neighborhood. It's going to be the suspect. He's walking eastbound. With a dramatic showdown between two police officers and 62-year-old suspect Joseph Pappas. Police say Pappas took his own life as officers approached him this morning. Without the public, we wouldn't be standing here today. The death marking the end of a nearly two week long manhunt. Police say Pappas had a long held grudge against prominent cardiologist Dr. Mark Houseconnect, who once treated President George H.W. Bush and according to police, Pappas's mother when she died on the operating table 20 years ago. Investigators say in their hunt for a motive, a disturbing picture emerged, revealing just how much planning allegedly went into Dr. Houseconnect's July 20th murder. Our investigators found a very extensive uh, intelligence file that this suspect had put together on uh, Dr. Hosknecht. Police say the file also included the names of other employees at the Texas Medical Center, but it's unclear tonight whether or not they were targets too. 
And we have learned tonight that a camera on a city bus captured the entire murder. The police chief told me that it is the most chilling video he has ever watched. He also said that he's thankful the community helped catch a killer. Tom. Marcus, more for us. Marcus, thank you. News tonight about the desperate search for that missing student in Iowa. Authorities looking through ditches and farms for Molly Tibbetts, who vanished while jogging more than two weeks ago. The reward now jumping to more than $200,000. ABC's Alex Perez is in Iowa. Tonight, Molly Tibbetts' father begging for help. We're all in this together. We're all trying to bring Molly back. Her boyfriend, Dalton Jack, making an emotional plea to Molly's possible abductor. Let's try to put yourself in our shoes. What if somebody had taken somebody that you love so much and just have the courage to come forward. It's been more than two weeks since the University of Iowa student vanished. Authorities have searched nearby properties, investigated a report of a possible sighting in Missouri, and are following up, they say, on hundreds of tips. Authorities have remained tight-lipped about the investigation, but investigators say they do have a solid base of evidence they are working from. And so we come to work every day with an attitude that um, we're going to find Molly today, and we hope to be able to do that and report that to you soon. The reward for information on Molly's whereabouts growing, now topping $200,000. Tom, investigators say they are working this case around the clock. There are signs like this one just about everywhere you look across town. Authorities are hoping that increased reward will motivate anyone with information to come forward. Tom? And that reward's still growing tonight. All right, Alex, thank you. The new headline about the Las Vegas massacre tonight, the motive behind the worst mass shooting in modern American history will remain a mystery. The police department releasing its final report on Stephen Paddock's killing spree last October. Investigators say they may never know why he opened fire from his room at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. 58 people were killed, hundreds wounded, attending that outdoor concert. The sheriff calling Paddock, quote, an unremarkable man with a troubled mind. Next tonight, President Trump and China stoking the flames of their trade war China warning it will hit the U.S. with $60 billion worth of new tariffs in response to the president's threat of a $200 billion tariff on Chinese products. Americans already caught in the middle. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. A new front in the escalating trade war with China, which today threatened to impose $60 billion in new tariffs on a wide range of American products. The move comes after President Trump moved to dramatically increase U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods. The president talked about his get tough on China trade policy at his rally last night in Pennsylvania. Right now, China's not too happy with me. And our country got ripped off like no country ever before in the history of the world. We got ripped off. The new Chinese tariffs would cover over 5,000 American products. New taxes on honey, coffee, wine, American beef, salmon, vegetables, and much more. Many of the targeted products come from areas that voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump in the 2016 election. The president's top economic advisor offered an ominous warning today to China. The message here is do not underestimate President Trump's determination to follow through on the China trade reform campaign. They better take President Trump seriously. Today's escalation comes after tit-for-tat moves where the United States and China each imposed new tariffs on $34 billion worth of imports last month, an expanding trade war that could hit American companies, farmers, and consumers hard. John Carl joins us now live from the White House. And John, how's the administration reacting tonight to those new threats from China? The message to China tonight comes from the White House press secretary, Sarah Sanders, who said instead of retaliating, China should address long-standing concerns about its unfair trading practices. In other words, Tom, the White House is not backing down. Jonathan Carl for us tonight. John, thank you. And a late immigration headlight coming in tonight. A federal judge ruling the Trump administration must fully restore DACA. The program for so-called dreamers, it allows nearly 800,000 undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children to remain in the country. The judge giving the administration 20 days to appeal. And there's still much more ahead on World News Tonight this Friday. The dramatic rescue. A child choking on a marble, no longer breathing when the officer arrived. What he did to save her life. Plus, Harvey Weinstein fighting back.